Hello and welcome to the Now Spinning Magazine podcast with me, Phil Aston. And I'm delighted to have with me Tice Van Leer from Prog Legends Focus with me today, who are about to release their new album, Focus 12. Welcome, Tice. Welcome. Thank you very much. This is, I've, I've been very lucky that I've been given an advanced kind of access to the new album and I've been playing it um, literally every day. Um, it's a wonderful album. It's, it, it's, you can tell it's focus immediately. Um, what, how did this album come together? Is it any different to the way that you've worked before? I don't think so. It's actually the same procedure and the, the same way we listened to each other's compositions and the same way we said yes and we said no to some new things. So, no, it's not so much different from previous situations. But it does have um, a, a track that's completely improvised on it, doesn't it? It is, yes. Which one is that, by the way? Um, you have to help me with the, with the title. Uh, well, I've got uh, it's Ford Focus, Focus 13, Bella, Meta Infa, Nita, All Aboard, Born to Be You, Nora, Bowie, and Post Donato Nato and Gear. Right. Yeah. Um, you remember which one? One of the one, one of, of the those. First, yes. Yeah. Because uh, I mean, I I absolutely love the I love the album. Um, the the fir first one, very clever Ford Focus, um, which obviously in in the UK is a well known car. Um, the, the the guitar playing on this album, and I know the, 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 the band has been stable in a lineup for quite a while now, but yes. the guitar playing is exceptional. Um, exceptional, really, it's isn't true. it? Yeah, it really is. Um, I, I just love the first one, and then the third, the the second one in Focus Thirteen. And I love the way Focus have always done that. Had like a, a a song, a track that's called almost the one after the one you've just done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But this is this is classic Focus in that it's got really strong melodies. Um, and I guess one of the things that when people think of progressive rock, they think of almost some people do almost mathematical, complex time changes. But with Focus. The, the music is actually is very lyrical. Um, there's lots of strong melody without there being any words. Would you right. agree with that? Yeah. So I would not call Focus a progressive rock band. I don't like the word even. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. And there are a lot of progressive bands that do respond to that procedure. But I... <laughs> I would say we are just a instrumental, mainly instrumental rock band, and we have always been that. And do you, when you, when the music comes together? Because I, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but were you all in the same place when you did this? You're all in the studio together, were you, when you recorded this? Yeah, we, yeah, most uh, most of the things, yes, because some, some guitar things were done later. Yeah, improvisation. But the, but the but, core of the music, you were together. Yeah, we were really much uh, as a quartet. We were together. Yeah. So that, in a way, makes it more open and easy for you to perhaps um, pull together music from an improvisation exercise because you are all looking at each other and feeling the music as you play. True. Yeah. Right. And does the does the music come from? Because it does it start from yourself with the core melody, kind of like the layers of of, of keyboard for, or, or yeah, the things that I contributed to the Focus Twelve are conceived on a piano or a synthesizer, and so melody, harmony, and also rhythm are composed by me alone yeah. yeah at home and then you you take the idea to the rest of the band right and, and they you... say yes or no <laughs> <laughs> yeah 
And do you do you have an idea of the kind of melodies that the guitarists will play over it, or is it, or do you, or do you kind of? Yeah, with the, with the fixed compositions, uh, I have the melodies totally written out. Oh, right. Before. Yeah, yeah. But the improvisation part, of course, not. Of course, of course. Yeah. yeah. But the mute. I mean, all the tracks are. Again, I know you said you focus on an instrumental rock band, not not a prog band, but all the music is around the kind of three and a half, four, five minute mark as well. There's, there isn't right. anything that kind of pushes out into the kind of 12, 15 minute mark at all. They're all concise. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's by chance. <laughs> <laughs> it was not, not a real meaning behind that. Right. But no. does it does it mean that live you, it gives you the room to stretch out and maybe go somewhere else with the with the with the music? Always, yeah, yeah. And and is that is that something that happens in a stage environment? I mean, when you play, if if some of these songs are going to be tracks are going to be in your new set list, do you know from rehearsals which ones may extend into different ways, or is it sometimes just in the moment of being on stage? Where you just yeah take it somewhere else? Not so much uh, preconceived. No, some some things are interesting to extend. Yeah, in a way, and others are not. They're just the compositions at it, at, as they are. Yeah. I, I love um, the track Bella, where it's got really beautiful soaring melody. Um, but the the next one, one of my favourites, is Meta in Definita, if I've pronounced that correctly. Um, and because it's it starts with that, it starts with the flute, and right. and the guitar almost like hangs in space with really nice, really cool percussion underneath. This one is quite different to focus to me. Uh, it's a I that think one? that's the improvisational. Oh, one. is it? Ah, oh, yeah, because it's so. yeah. yeah. I love it because the yeah. guitars are just. It's almost. I, I can almost tell now. You've said it could be that it's that one. That it. All, I can almost feel that the musicians. You're all looking at each other yeah. to get a feel for where you're going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lovely. Yes, yeah, it's, it's fantastic. <laughs> um, and then all aboard has got a really jazzy feel. Now, as as because I know you said that you're not. You don't describe yourself as a progressive rock band, but would you say that jazz uh, has been an influence in your career as a oh, as a genre? Oh, yeah, oh, of course. In the, in the beginning, already when I was like twelve years old, I listened a lot to Miles Davis, John Coltrane, and later to Herbie Hancock, Weather Report. You know, they were great influences, all of them. Oscar Peterson, not to forget. Yeah, but but also there was also on the still connected, I suppose, is is Bartok and Bach as well has been a big influence on on your yes. playing and music. Yeah. Have you, have you as to me the most important classical composer of the ninth uh, the twentieth century, and Bach as the, the best composer of all times. Was that kind of uh, I've got, what did I put in my notes? The track called Bowie. Um, that's solo piano. Was there a kind of this? It's got a, a lovely contemporary modern feel, but is there a bit of kind of bark in 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 that in the way that you put that together? No, not really. I had written it for the band. Ah, right. I decided there not to use the band really but on the piano. Yeah. So I played it on the piano solo. But it was it was a piece that I wrote for the band. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. But it is a beaut it is a beautiful melody, and of course Thank that you. that then segues really well into the next one, uh, posted Tonato. Is it Tonato? Um, Sorry, the, ne the next track. Um, I'm probably not pronouncing that very well. Posit. Oh no, I think it is Positano. That's it. Thank Positano. you. Positano. Thank you, thank you for pointing that out. I, I love that, and this is the one with like some acoustic nylon guitar, um, very reflective piece, isn't it? Right. Yeah. Well, it is at that. It is at that stage. A little little village near Naples. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. 
And I, I, I like a one, about one minute in, one minute, 20 seconds, you've got a flute and then this lovely bubbling bass line as well and some strum guitar. Um, but absolutely classic focus song. Thank you. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much. Are there are there any particular moments yourself in the album where you've thought, "Wow, that's uh, we've we've done a good job there"? Yeah, I think uh, Fjord Focus is an example of how things can get better than you expect it be, to be, and uh, mainly the the guitar, what he does there, Menno Gootjes, it's incredible. Also, what he plays on the on the uh, solo bit in the end, he did it in one take. Wow! Nearly impossible. Oh, but please. it is possible. Because Obviously. yeah, I mean, he's he's playing is as I said already is exceptional and tracks like All Aboard, when, which has that jazzy feel, but towards the end, yeah. there's almost like a heavy metal feel to the guitar playing. It's 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 got every, every kind of emotion in there, uh, right. and the the other the other track that I really love, which is another solo um, piano piece, is "Born to Be You." That's that's almost got a very theatrical film score feel, as if it's kind of an Alfred Hitchcock type. Is that the piano solo thing? Yeah, that's Menno, the guitarist, playing the piano. Is it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, amazing, oh, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. 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 That's beautiful. Because he, he was also he also produced the album, didn't he, with uh, your the bass player, yeah? He co produced, yeah. So was for the, for you, was that uh, was that different in having the, the two kind of well say kind of younger or newer members? You've been together a long time now, but was that different for you to actually let to let to hand that over to, to them? Yeah, it was a thrill to do so. <laughs> And there was total trust. Which, yes. Which uh, I think was right to do so. Right. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely. And the, the album artwork is another wonderful um, painting illustration um, by Roger Dean, isn't it? Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. Roger Dean's done the last uh, two or three Focus albums now, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. You you've continued to keep your passion with uh, Pierre van der Linden, uh, or the, or the other key member of Focus. You know, how do you keep your kind of sense of wonder in in writing music? Because it's just something that you you do when you wake up in the morning. I know I understand. I read that you literally start work at four thirty. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> no, that, that that that's the past. That's the past. But- Nearly every day that I try to compose something new, a yeah. few bars or 20 bars or 40 bars or even more. Is that, do you think it's a bit like um, writing or, or doing anything that's your kind of like core passion that it, it's important to do something every day to keep that, to keep that ticking over? True. Yeah. And do you, do you kind of record? all the time so you've got little snippets of ideas that you can dip into or do you just no i write most of the things on my uh, synthesizer oh yeah and with headphones so i'm uh, totally silent for my wife who is also in the house more of, of most of the time yeah and so i have a silent kind of discussion with myself ah oh. Interesting. And I use a, a motive, uh, motive eight of Yamaha. Yeah. Uh, beautiful string, beautiful strings combined with piano. Yeah. It's a lovely sound. And so that, that's most of the time the things that I, uh, that I compose with. Yeah. And, um, we mentioned you, you you love classical music and you blend classical music into focus uh, compositions really well. Uh, does that form any kind of challenges to when you're composing music or have you just found it something that's easy to to do, combine these two worlds? Um, 
I don't know. I cannot. I cannot ask. I cannot answer this question because now, on one day, it's more the classical thing that inspires me, and the next day, it's the modern jazz one, and then it's the rock and roll one. So I don't know. I I love all those uh, styles. That, yeah. yeah. I suppose it's 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 me as a it's me as a listener asking you questions where I'm kind of seeing lines between them, but as you as the composer, they're all part of your makeup, yeah. aren't they? Right. Yeah. So so it's actually to you they're just part of the same thing. Right. Right. Although have you I know you in earlier on in your career you released some kind of more pure classical type solo albums. Have you ever thought of doing another another solo project based on not that? right now? But uh, it has been very successful, mainly in in the Netherlands. It was the best sold album ever in Holland. Wow! Yeah, it's amazing. So uh, yeah. right now, I I would not try to copy, but maybe in a few years, yes, maybe. And. I can tell from listening to the new album that, as I said at the start, I can tell its focus. I can tell from the melody lines, the way the interaction of the instrumentation, and a lot of that. I remember when I was at when I was at school in the early seventies, yeah. but the time in the UK when Sylvia and Hocus Pocus were in the top twenty at the same time. Even my music teacher, who used to just play classical music to us every week, started telling us to listen to Focus because it was a he saw it as like a crossover between this this band from overseas were, were combining the music he'd been trying to get us to listen to without success um, <laughs> <laughs> was now showing that there was this rock band doing this really beautiful mel melodious melodious instrumentation but since then since those early 70s has the band and you yourself have you absorbed other influences along the way over the decades yeah i would say m most mostly uh, mod uh, a jazz rock yeah if you want to call a weather report jazz rock herbie hankel jazz rock yeah uh, uh, but also many folk music from all over the world, and uh, also modern ja uh, modern classical music. So there has been a lot more influences since the beginning. Yes, yeah. And when you do, because you're going out on tour soon as well, aren't you? And it's an extensive tour. I mean, it, yeah. you're very busy. Um, when you put together the set list, is it, is it? Do you find that easy, or do you think we've got to put hocus pocus in? We've got to put this in. We've got. I mean, are there some things that you really you put in as a surprise to the no, audience? But for this tour that, that we're gonna do with, for instance, Asia and, and the other yeah. bands, uh, we chose to play mainly uh, moving waves material. Uh -huh. Yeah. I see it standing in your yes. corner. Yes, there it is. <laughs> yeah, because uh, Hocus Pocus is there, Focus 2 is there, Eruption is there. Yeah. And uh, we play Sylvia, which is not from uh, Moving Waves, but from, from Focus 3. Yeah, brilliant album. But not so much more, because there's only three quarters of an hour we can fill. Yeah. So we are kind of <laughs> that, that's... limited. That's it. Yeah. And of course, in the in the UK, we had that uh, program called Saxondale, where House of the King was used all the time. So, yeah. do, you, do you do you ever put that into the set, or we have seen House of the King as well? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I think we will start with that because it was our very first hit in Holland. Yeah, and in the Flemish part of Belgium. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of, it was one of the first uh, pieces of music by Focus I ever heard. That was. Um, mm, right. And it, isn't it amazing how, I mean, you must know this yourself, but I'm saying this as a fan, really, how that, that music like Sylvia, that, that tune is so, as soon as you hear it, I was playing it in the car the other day and my wife Sue started to hum along to it. We just, It's just such a memorable melody. Right. And I think it's that's... It's written on lyrics, by the way. 
Was it? Oh, right. Lyrics of a friend of mine who just died. Yeah. Linda von Deck. And she wrote, I thought I could do everything on my own. I was always stripping the town alone. Oh, wow. <laughs> and uh, that was a girl that thought she could do everything. And she, she was strong. Yeah. Till she meets this guy and then her whole world falls into yeah pieces <laughs> so, so 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 that's that's interesting does that were you ever tempted then to have a vocalist if no i was vocalist together yeah, of with course you were yeah in the very first album yeah but our english was not our strongest point so we became an instrumental group later and that was our uh, Probably the best decision we could ever have done. <laughs> so, yeah. But it's interesting because maybe because of that, it's what I said at the start is that the, the focus sound, it's sat, the, 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 the melodies played instrumentally by yourself on either flute or keyboards or the guitar, they sound like voices. They sound like they could be lines of lyrics, don't they? That's a great compliment. Yes. Thank you. And I think that's that's all the way through. You know, I was listening to "Focus of the Rainbow" after listening to the new album, and you can you can feel the the journey, but also the join in how the right. you, they are tunes that you can whistle. Right. Yeah. My dad used to say, "If it's a really good tune, you'll be able to whistle it." And as a <laughs> as and as a as an instrumental rock band, I think that's in an amazing achievement that so much of the music is memorable like that. Yeah. Thank you. And of course, Hocus Pocus, one of the most powerful riffs and memorable. One riffs of the best ever. riffs ever written. Yeah. I must say to Jan Ackermann, thank you again, again. He did it. And he was playing that on a rehearsal. Wow. In a castle. We had a castle to rehearse in and he played it and then after that, he stopped and Pierre did a two-bar yeah. drum solo. And I started yodeling first time in my life. I never did that before. It was just there, created on the, on the spot, on the moment. So, so literally, in the, in the moment, you're just literally trying something out and you just think, you just start yodeling. But, and you all, you all carried on playing Jan Ackerman no, didn't I, stop and, and I go, was the chords on organ, <laughs> the Hammond organ chords, and yeah. the yodeling, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the, the yodeling, yeah. Yeah. Wow. And it became a big hit. It did? Yeah. It's, yes, and it's unique, isn't it? There is nothing else like it anywhere. <laughs> Lovely, yeah. Because it's also interesting that because so many things, if someone has success with something, undoubtedly someone else will think that's a good idea but no one has ever no one has ever gone anywhere near that that is completely <laughs> uniquely focused isn't it thank you <laughs> that's fantastic um so when when does the tour kick off um the, the first one of the first days of july wow so not that long so how no. how much preparation do you need do you have like several days of rehearsal before you no, not really. No. Yeah, I think two or two or three days of uh, meeting yeah. the bands and have have a good time together and yeah and rehearse, of course. And but, uh, although you've got you you only got forty five minutes and you've got a lot of key stuff to put in, will you be uh, featuring some of the new music as well from the new album? I don't think so. Really? No. Is that just literally because of time constraints, really? I would say that's the main main thing, yes. Yes. I mean, does that do you do you wish you could probably put some in or or it's yeah, if it was if there was more time uh, then we would have done two yeah. one or two songs, yes. Of course, because uh, I mean, my one of my favourite albums by yourselves is actually Hamburger Concerto. It's one of my oh, really? favourites, yeah. Because that's a also a wonderful album. I mean, even your more more, more recent ones are, are just as are just as good. And and for everyone watching and listening to this, Focus Twelve 
comes out on July the 5th, doesn't it, I believe? Right. Yeah. On vinyl and CD. Um, right. Yeah. And so that, yes, for all of you watching, listening, yes, stream it to give it a listen, but you must go and buy a physical copy to help support the artists that create this wonderful art for us all. Thank you. Right. Well, well, thank you very much, Ties, for all of your time today. It's been thank wonderful you. talking to you. The album is available from Burning Shed. Um, for is the best place probably to get it from. And if you want any information on the tour dates, you can go to focustheband.co.uk. Lovely. Thank right. you for this conversation. Thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. Um, and and good luck with the album. Um, it's absolutely wonderful. And hopefully we'll, we'll talk again uh, in the future when you're back from tour. Lovely. Thank you very much. A huge thank you to my guest, Thijs van Leer from Progressive Rock Legends Focus. Although, as Thijs said, he doesn't like to think of the band as being a prog rock band. And I understand that now, um, talking to Thijs, because the music is so melodic. Um, it always has been. It doesn't matter where you dip into the back catalogue for Focus. The music is driven by these wonderful melodic guitar lines, keyboards, flute, and also interesting, uh, you know, that some of the songs that like Sylvia started with lyrics and being a sung piece of music. And it's interesting that even without the lyrics or the, the vocalists themselves, the music works because the instrumentation comes across as the, you know, the guitars and flutes and keyboards are like voices. And so you can, when you listen to, especially just as much on the new album, Focus 12, which comes out on July the 5th on vinyl and CD, there's some wonderful melodies and great pieces of music. And it's a really, really strong album by Focus. So that is out on July the 5th. And for more information, go to focustheband.co.uk. So thank you for watching and listening. Please check out the website at nasbinning.co.uk. Subscribe to the podcast on Apple, Spotify, Amazon, YouTube. We've got tons of videos and reviews and special features. And we're on X, we're on Instagram, we're on Threads, we're on TikTok, we're on Facebook. And we have a private Collectors Facebook group as well. So remember, music is the healer and the doctor. Please take care. Keep spinning those discs and I shall see you all very, very soon.